Good morning. Welcome to another stream. Light to Gaming. And this morning we are continuing with As We Know It. So I started this yesterday morning and completed the um, through the first week following um, the start of jobs. We just had the um, the end of week party, and we're picking up an action with the following morning. So let's just jump right in. Uh oh, we back out. All right, I was concerned there for a very very short moment. Let's see, January 25th, 845. Yeah, that's the latest. Okay. <clears throat> Jumping right in. I felt like hell. So probably a bit of a hangover is my guess. Mom had already left. She must have decided to let me sleep in. My head was pounding. I rolled out of bed and stumbled to the kitchen sink for some water. The chill felt nice on my forehead. It had been a long time since I'd felt this way. I glanced around the room and tried to find something to provide relief. I could just go to the clinic. Maybe they had something for the pain. Or I could just go back to bed. So what shall we do? Go to the clinic or go back to bed? I'm going to follow kind of the the ideal that I've been following so far which is to choose the action that results in the most interaction with other characters or provides the most likelihood of furthering the story so we're gonna go to the clinic now that I had easy access to a clinic in medicine I should take advantage of it and this has to be a foreign concept you know on the surface, they were living a hard life and had very limited access to resources. Most likely any sort of medical care I imagine would have been um, not the greatest and probably would have been quite expensive to them. It was still early enough that the hallways were deserted. It was quiet, which was nice considering my headache. I walked into the clinic it was dark and, for a moment, I thought it was empty. Then I heard someone clear their throat and approach. It's Micah. The clinic is not open yet. I saw him, but he wasn't looking at me, just down at a stack of papers. Oh, sorry. Micah stopped and looked up. Late, which if you didn't join yesterday late is my character's name um inspired by my 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 channel name late i did not realize it was you i've got a pounding headache so i was hoping you'd have something for it of course come with me he led me towards the medical supply closet and opened it he poured out a jar and handed me two pills fortunately for us Camden had its own lab. Less to trade for, I assume. Uh, that's impressive. I don't know what the technology level is of this time period, but for this this underground city to have its own lab um, making pharmaceuticals seems surprising to me. Oh yes, thank you. These will be great. Micah led me towards the exit and we said our goodbyes. I was already starting to feel a lot better. No indication here of how much time has passed, but I'm assuming at some time that, you know, she's not feeling better by the time she gets back to the room. There wasn't any work to do today, so maybe I could try to see someone. So I have options here. I can see Ava, Jude, Micah, or Gloria. So I have, I think in my last uh, progress update, it showed one heart with the Jude relationship. 
I could try to cultivate that or I could try interacting more with someone else, which I think I'd like to do. And I think that's going to be Ava. I headed outside to walk around. I was anxious to stretch my legs. I started to walk in a random direction when somebody tapped me on the shoulder. Hey, late. This is, this is Ava. Hey, late. I was heading to the gym. Want to come? We can race. I turned to see Ava, standing tall with a large bottle of water in her hand. Race? Yeah, on the running track. It's more fun if you're with someone. Uh, yeah, oh, sure. Clearly, Lady is not uh, a big fan of exercise, but uh, I think she's she's willing to fake it um, to hang out with Ava. I suppose there's no harm in trying, she says. Great. If anyone else, if it was anyone else, I'd try to get you to put money on it. I'm pretty fast, you know. I can't decide if this is really about the race or if he's uh, getting into some double entendre here. Are you? I suppose that's good, given your occupation. <clears throat> yeah, and if you're not diligent with your fitness, Vince will come down on you hard. Vince does seem like a pretty serious guy, even though he also is very... Um, he's very friendly and he likes to joke around. So now we're at the gym. The gym was quiet. Hardly anyone was here. Ava dropped her gear and pulled her overshirt off and then began to stretch. I averted my eyes before she caught me staring at her toned arms and shoulders. Luckily, I wore good shoes for running and lightweight clothing. I hadn't planned to exercise, but here I was. We can just race one lap. Then just jog, Ava says. <clears throat> she smiled at me and pointed her foot at the white line. That's the start and finish, okay? All right. We stood behind the line and I tried to mimic Ava's stance. She began to count and then we ran. I took a few steps and already my lungs were on fire. I was dying. I made it perhaps another few feet before I had to stop and walk. My breathing was heavy. Ava continued to jog until she ran all the way around and met back up with me. Shit, are you alright? I'm sorry. Maybe I should have let you win. <laughs> Why? I don't know. She glanced down and began to hop from one foot to the other. We could just walk? That might be good. She smirked at me. Well, I don't want you to die on me. I haven't been on the surface in years. I keep hoping I'll, it'll get better somehow. Yeah, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, I guess. I've got relatives on the surface still. They won't come here though. <clears throat> what? Why not? Ava sighed and for a moment I didn't think she would reply. They say they're old and were born up there, so they'll die there. She shook her head. Your parents? No, my grandparents. I, I guess. The people who raised me anyway. I don't know if we're blood related. Oh. She shrugged it off. The movement elegant. She got quiet, so I decided not to bring it up. And instead I made small talk. I had a lot of fun with Ava. And after we went our separate ways... Let me try that again. I had a lot of fun with Ava, and after, we went our separate ways. I wanted to shower, and she planned to work out more. It was getting late, and I was tired. Time for bed. Okay. So here we have a progress tracker. Really no change. I've got uh, one on the stress rating, three on the standing, and one each for the, for the Jude and Sam relationships. So I think that is exactly where we were um, at the end of the last day. So moving on to the next day. 
When I woke up, I saw that Mom was sitting at the table, happily sewing something. Since when do you sew? I know how to sew, the Mom says. I know that, but you hate to do it. Yet here you are, humming away. Oh, hush. What are you sewing, anyway? I'm patching up an old scarf. An old scarf? Which one? It's one of Rick's. He was thinking about donating it to the fabric stores, but I told him I could patch it up for him. Hmm, is that part of your job as his assistant? Oh, he told me not to bother, but I insisted. So Rick is the mayor, and the mother was immediately taken uh, with him uh, the very first day she met him, and she clearly... Um, was very interested in, in this man. <clears throat> and he has shown interest in her as well. So, at the job fair, it was announced that he had created the position of assistant to the mayor, specifically um, to give your mother a job. So, that's kind of what's going on here. Back to the mother. She was smiling. And I could tell, she, well, this is you talking about the mother. She was smiling, and I could tell that she was now a lost cause. I sighed. There was no stopping it now. The intercom lit up, and the static-filled voice began an announcement. Camden Community Meeting, everyone. Please make your way to the community center as soon as possible. <clears throat> you know, it would be very annoying to have these community meetings just announced. It sounds like there's no warning, there's no schedule. They just <clears throat> announce them and everyone must get to the community center as soon as possible. And that, now maybe something has happened. But otherwise it just feels like it would be very annoying to be in the middle of working out or relaxing or asleep or, you know, whatever. In the middle of cooking your meal, you just have to drop everything and rush to this community meeting. I looked at Mom and she smiled. Are these going to be a weekly thing? I believe so. Come on. I've got to get there early and make sure everything is ready for Rick. Okay, so I can stay and procrastinate. Leave now with your mom or don't go at all. I'm trying to play nice. So I'm going to go. Now, do I go now, or do I wait? Eh, there's no harm in leaving with your mother, that I can see. Alright, alright, let me get my stuff together. I got ready quickly, while Mom urged me on. Then we rushed to the community center. Mom was by the mayor, who had his freshly darned sc scarf draped around his throat. He was smiling at Mom while preparing to step onto the stage. The room was filled with people, and I grabbed a cup of coffee and sat near the back. This is Mayor Rick Davidson. Good afternoon, everyone. It always brings me so much joy to see all of your faces on a day like this. First, let me update everyone on last week's news. The Career, Festi the career Festival was a success. All of our new residents have joined a career and should be fitting in nicely. Resource production is steady as usual, and other than some stormy weather on the horizon, everything appears peaceful on the surface. He began to drone on and on, talking about all kinds of things I knew nothing about. Announcements and upcoming events I could just read about on the bulletin board. I rubbed the bridge of my nose and sipped my coffee. Hopefully this meeting would be over soon. Eventually he got off the stage and went straight to my mother. I perked up and watched him pat his scarf and say something to her with a smile. So we have a gossip monger here. Who is that? Gossip monger too. I don't know. Do you think our eligible mayor has finally decided to settle down? They giggled like girls several years younger than them. 
It looks like she's just a secretary or whatever. In all the years we've lived here, have you have you heard even the smallest rumor about him and a special someone? I stood up and left. I couldn't stomach to hear any more. Mom could meet me at home later. For now, I needed to go home. I just needed to get out of that crazy cluster of people. I walked back and strongly considered just laying in bed, but then I'd end up waiting for her to come home. I had some time to do something before the day was over. So here I have three options. I can spend my free time in the library, the gym, or at Icarus. Um, so far I've just gone to the Icarus every time. I'm going to keep playing this out and see where it goes. So here we are at the Icarus, which is the bar. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. There were a few things I could do. So you can either hang out with Sam or just relax. And I'll, I've been doing the hang out with Sam option primarily because I want to see if how deep I can take that. Will something change eventually? Um, not change, sorry. Will, will it get to where things will start repeating? Or have they, you know, coded into the game enough uh, varied conversation and activity to get me through every visit? I started to walk into the bar, but was stopped by a very irate Sam. Get out, all of you. There were people filtering out of the bar all around me. Sam, what's wrong? She finally seemed to spot me and pointed at me. You, you can stay. I wasn't sure if I wanted to at this point, but I was too scared to disobey her. What's going on? I spoke quietly as the rest of the people fled. She just shrugged and returned to the bar and offered me a drink. Do we demand to know or order a drink, I guess? We'll go ahead and order a drink. I think it'll be easier to get this out of her um, in a ca more casual conversation. I'll take a whiskey on the rocks. I don't know why she's saying it with a question mark. She started to get my drink together, muttering under her breath. The nerve of some people. Yeah. Just silence from Sam. She sighed and lowered her head into her hands, then made a noise. It was either a growl or a groan. I wasn't sure. I probably overreacted, but I don't care. Sometimes you just gotta get a break from people's shit, you know? I nodded and sipped my drink. Things were getting rowdy and loud, so she shrugged. I guess you're okay, though. I smiled and took another drink. I was too nervous to speak, but I was happy she seemed to be patient with me. She also seemed to be done venting because she turned away and let silence fall between us. So now we're back at the room. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. So at the end of the day, we have no change to the progress tracker. Still at one, one heart and one sun for Jude and Sam. Three standing and one stress. So the next, here we are the next morning. <clears throat> I got up and headed out to grab a cup of coffee before work. So this is pretty much every day Every day starts the same, which is, I can't decide if it's disappointing or if it is really establishing the routine of it and just how it's just the same old, same old every single day in and out, just the same thing. Um, it's hard to tell. I guess what I'm saying is it's hard to tell if it's intentional to make a point or if it was just what was easy to write and code. It was just another day in the greenhouse.
I made sure Brian was doing what he was supposed to and helped Jude get everything else done. So Brian is actually, I guess, the manager or the boss at the greenhouse, but he's very disorganized and tends to get easily distracted. So Jude and now you have to kind of keep him on track and keep him doing the things that he does while you, you know, do your job. The same old, same old. Now we're back in the room again. Work was over. And I had some time to kill. So again, I've got the three options. Library, gym, or Icarus. We're going to hit up Icarus again. Just keep with the same, uh, same pattern. As I walked in, I saw Jude sitting alone and toying with a rubber band. So Jude has this, um, he's dealing with giving up smoking. He seems like he, I'm not clear if he has an alcohol problem or if just Sam is very protective and cautious because she always cuts him off after it seems like maybe just after one drink. Um, I think his parents were killed on the surface before he was uh, brought here. So he has a lot uh, he's, you know, to deal with. And he, uh, he keeps rubber band around his um, wrist that he'll, he'll snap, um, you know, kind of as a coping mechanism. He didn't look too happy and maybe he wanted to be left alone. So should I give him space, buy him a drink or see if he wants company? I think it's okay to see, as long as, you know, you respect his response. I headed over to see if he was in the mood to talk. He looked up at me when I walked over, but still seemed pretty annoyed. My steps slowed, and I started to turn away, but he waved me over. This is Jude. I'm in a bad mood. Why? Why? He shrugged and nodded at the seat across from him. I hesitantly sat down. What do you miss about before? Before? Yeah, before you came down here. He sighed and looked down at his hands. I guess you haven't been down here long enough to miss anything, huh? Okay, so we have four choices here. I miss looking up at the stars. I miss everything. I miss nothing, or I miss wind. I have a hard time thinking that wind would be the answer because wind was such a problem on the surface. I think the stars is a good choice. Um, it's specific, yet... Something that may be hard, would it be hard for someone who's never been on the surface to understand. Now Jude has been on the surface, so he'll probably get it. Not that the you know, metal ceilings aren't great or whatever. Jude tapped his rubber band and smiled up at me. I remember the stars. Remind me to show you something later. Uh, it's a surprise. How am I supposed to remind you then? He shrugged, but he was biting his lip to hide a smile. So what's bothering you? What's got you so tense? You don't suddenly miss the surface, do you? No, not the surface exactly, just when things were simpler, I guess. I nodded and pretended to understand, or pretended I understood. He sighed and rested his chin on his hand. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be such a downer. It's alright, I don't mind. I mean, in fairness, he was already down and I approached him, so he really shouldn't be apologizing. <clears throat> anyway, I tried to make conversation, but he didn't seem to want to talk and only gave me one or two word responses. He did seem to enjoy my company, 
and was sad when I had to leave. So we're back at the room. It was getting late and I was tired, so time for bed. So looking at the progress tracker, uh, still no change. Got a one for Sam and Jude relationships. Uh, one stress and three standing. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. I walked into the greenhouse. Jude asked me more questions and then seemed satisfied with my answers. I wasn't sure if he really thought I was ready or if he just needed help picking up Brian's slack. Okay, we're back at the room. I kind of... I kind of wish there was more focus on the on the jobs, but I realized that you know that's a lot of effort because there were I think four different jobs that could have been chosen. So you know, thinking about it from a writing and uh, and you know drawing, you know the artwork and the animation and everything, and not animation, but the just the gameplay and everything. I, I know that's a lot of material to have to include that's that's optional you know and when play through you're only going to see one set of them um but still i would like to see more more detail it seems uh, and the same thing you know i'm sure it was true with the um you know the activities after work those are more you know fleshed out which i'm happy to see there i just wish the you know the activity of the jobs was similarly fleshed out so where are we going to spend our free time? Well, let's keep at it and go back to the Icarus. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. There are a few things I can do. Hang out with Sam or relax. We'll hang out with Sam again. I sat at the bar and gave Sam a friendly nod. She hardly looked up, but she did return the gesture. You want the same as before? Yeah. She grunted and grabbed a clean, gr a clean glass. As I, watched, as I watched her, a man sat directly next to me. He leaned over, smelling strongly of liquor. We were calling to him Gross Man. Hey. He muttered more words, but his speech was so slurred I had no idea what he was trying to say. Whatever it was, he found it, he found it amusing and started to laugh at himself. Sam met my gaze and raised her brow. We can choose to ask and to escort him back to his home, shove the guy away, ask Sam to help, or just ignore him. Normally escort him back to home would be maybe the last thing I would do. Because I would worry about the risk involved. In this situation, so far with this game, I haven't had any reason to think that there's any real risk. So I'm going to choose that option. I'm just kind of curious. I leaned my forehead against the bar for a moment. Damn it. All right. Come on, you drunk. Let's get you home. Oh? Yes, I would like that, hmm? Do you remember where you live? He nodded. I walked him towards the exit and then headed where he motioned that he lived. Once he was home, I gave up on my night and headed home. Okay, so that went no problem. Um, I thought there might be a little bit of difficulty, but I thought, you know, I didn't expect anything terrible. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. So, again, no standing on the progress tracker. So here we are the next morning. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. So it's just another day in the greenhouse. I carefully organized the reports Brian had left scattered on his desk and checked the water tank levels. Same old, same old. 
Work was over and I had some time to kill. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if I'm going to have to do something different to advance any story. Let's try the Icarus one more time. If nothing changes, then maybe, maybe I'll take a different approach because I don't want to just sit here and just churn away the same thing repeatedly. Although something is different because here's Ava in the, in the Icarus. Ava swaggered around one of the pool tables and smiled when her eyes met. She mouthed, watch this, and leaned over to take a shot. She smacked the ball and it hit the corner and nothing else. I could hear her curse from here. I covered my mouth so she wouldn't see me laughing. She handed off her pool stick and headed in my direction. I'm usually a lot better at that. It was still very impressive. That I missed? It was a very skilled miss. She laughed and sat beside me. I'll teach you to play sometime. It's a lot of fun. So I can choose no thanks for sure. I, I see no reason not to take her up on the offer. Sure. I'd like to learn. It might be fun. I'm a great teacher, so you'll get the hang of it in no time. Should I buy you a drink? No, I can't stay. She frowned and sighed. I was just on a break. I gotta get back to work soon. Really? This late? I'm doing some extra guard duty stuff. She tapped on her knees and glanced behind me at some other security officers. They waved her over. I guess you gotta go. Yeah, work, work, work. Need to keep this place safe. I wonder why they're doing extra duty. If they're shorthanded or if there's something going on. She smiled and hopped to her feet, then chased after the others. Okay, so back at the room. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. No change on the progress tracker. Oh, okay, here we've got a change. The world rattled and roared. A siren began to blare through the intercom system. And I could hear it echo throughout all of the other homes from the intercom. A level 5 dust storm has hit the surface. Please stay where you are until further notice. A level 5? Mom was sitting up, her arms wrapped around herself. The ground trembled. I could hear the water moving in the pipes due to the air pressure changes. So I'm a little interested in how a strong dust storm on the surface could be having this much impact underground. This is mom. A level five? That meant massive tornadoes of dust and fire. Everything in its path would get destroyed within minute, within miles. Mom was safe. I was safe. We were underground. But what about... And so I had the four options of four people. Um, you know, the four people I've been interacting with. And I don't really think any of them have reason to not be safe either. The only one I'm going to even think is maybe Ava. Since she's doing security, who knows where exactly she is. The other should be just safely in their rooms. So we'll go with Ava. Mom got out of bed and sat at a table, clasping her hands together tightly and rocking back and forth slightly. I went to her side and tried to think. What should we do? So I can respond, stay where you are or head to, oh, I can, yeah, stay where you are or head towards the entrance. We're gonna go with stay where you are. The annoying alarm was right. The safest thing would be to stay underground. Maybe we should try going to the community center. I thought we were supposed to stay here. Yes, but the community center is always open. Especially in times like this, it's a good place to get information. Her eyes seemed distant, but it made sense. There was another tremor. Okay, okay. 
Maybe the community center would be better than here. I don't think that's wise. Personally, the intercom said stay where you are. Um, but we stepped out into the hallway and mom was right. A few people were heading that way. There was a small crowd here and water had been set out. Set out. People sat together and seemed to be seeking comfort and company. When I glanced around, I saw Jude and Gloria. Gloria was handing out water and blankets. Jude was sitting on the floor by himself. Maybe I should check in on one of them. Mom put a hand on my shoulder. I'm going to help hand out things, okay? All right. So we can talk to Jude or talk to Gloria. I think we should talk to Jude. He seems the one that's in need of uh, some support. Gloria is kind of in her element, you know, being involved and helping out, organizing things. So as I approach Jude, Jude, you're here? Jude looked up at me and nodded. I sat beside him. I really want a cigarette, Jude says. Are you drunk? A little. I'm trying to sober up. I wanted to sleep through the storm, but I just couldn't. Even alcohol didn't help. Where's Sam? She locked herself in the storage room at Icarus. Storms bring up a lot of bad memories for me and Sam. My heart sank a little. Jude moved away from me a bit and brought his knees up to his chest. He looked so tired, but I didn't know how to help him, so I just sat with him. There was a loud roar above us and the room shook slightly. Everyone paused and it became so quiet you could hear Sands move. Then someone entered the room. Their face flushed as they shouted to kill the silence. So this is a distraught person. They kept the doors closed. Someone else. Really? Even now? They won't let anyone in. There was a small uproar building among everyone in the room. Then there was another tremor. Everyone fell silent again, but this time it was much heavier. I glanced at Jude, but his eyes were closed and he was frowning. I looked towards Gloria, and her lips were parted. She stared up towards the noise, her brow scrunched with curiosity. The distant roar continued, and I just felt cold. My former neighbors... The grouchy old man who lived in the old motor home in the center of town. The kids, orphans, who stayed in the repurposed church with a young couple who were too sweet for their own good. That old lady who never seemed to know where she was, but was pleased to be there anyway. The woman who stole my CD player and then denied it when I confronted her. The small group of militia who pretended to protect the town from the sand men. The traitors, bitter and suspicious broken families that had formed new ones. That guy down the way who always gave us extra food when he had it. I could see their faces flashing through my memories. The storm would have knocked out most of the town. Without power, a lot of these people would be dead by midday. I wonder if that's an indication of how hot it is on the surface? Or... If they use power for security somehow. Because that is a short period of time. You know in which to to die. Because of lack of power. Um, you know people in. The New Orleans area following Hurricane Ida. Have been without power for some of them. You know for weeks. Um, even though you know that was right at the end of summer. When it was very hot. So I'm, I am curious as to why these people can't survive without power on the surface. In fact, I assume that was the norm. To have, uh, you know, either no power or inconsistent kind of spotty power. I guess that's, that wasn't true. They could try to find shelter. Once the storm passed, they need to find somewhere to wait out the hottest hours of the day. Okay, so it is the heat. 
Maybe they could get the power going again, or maybe someone would share a generator that still worked. If the storm hadn't wiped everything out. The room shook again. Before I knew what was happening, Mom had taken me by the hand. She led me home. I got into bed and closed my eyes. I didn't want to think. I didn't want to think. If the doors had been opened, there would be a flood of people here right now. They'd probably wanted to conserve energy and resources for Camden, but I wasn't sure if that was the right thing to do. Maybe there wasn't enough to go around. I really didn't know. All of those people were either dead or else they would be soon. I think this is the dilemma in a situation like this. You know, especially as the mayor, you know, you've got, on the one hand, you have a responsibility to the people in the city. And they have been, it seems, very careful to select the residents that are allowed in. And I'm sure that is somewhat to try to ensure peace um also to make sure they're selecting people who can be productive and actually help the community um and that that all makes sense you let a bunch of unvetted people in you never know what the result will be um you know, these are people living on the surface who have been living in harsh conditions. I get the impression, you know, without an actual structured government dealing with the warlords and the sandmen, and that changes you. You know, that when that's been your life, especially if it's been your entire life, it has an effect on how you see things and how you interact with others and with authority and um, just how you conduct yourself out of necessity. And I can see where it would be risky to just bring some of those people into the city um, even if they are good people and aren't doing things with malicious intent. Um, they could still be very disruptive to this, this balance that's been created in this city. On the other hand, they're people. You know, there are people on the surface who are suffering and who could have been protected by opening the doors. Um, I suppose the question is, how long could they have, you know, if they're taking in refugees, how many? And for how long could they have stayed before the balance would have been tipped in a way that may put everyone at risk? I also don't know how many people we're talking about. So it seems that Camden isn't very big. Because it seems like everyone can meet in the community center. If that's the case, then I think we're talking about, you know, in the hundreds. And I assume there are thousands on the surface. I don't know if that's true. It's just, I guess, what I would expect. And if that's the case, you know, then maybe you open the doors and... and if thing gets over it gets overran security isn't sufficient to keep everyone you know in control and keep things orderly um there's probably not enough food the um they haven't really talked about the life support or so the climate controls and things like that but those systems are probably not suited so this is not an easy decision to make. 
I'm going to look at it from the perspective of the mayor. And say I'm glad that they, the door stayed closed. It's a very selfish response. Probably also a very practical one. Who knows what might have happened if they'd opened the doors. We may have all wound up dead. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Eventually, my eyes closed and I fell asleep. Here we are the next morning. It sounds like things are just back to normal. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. I wonder about Jude, how he's doing. I walked into the muggy greenhouse and it was quiet. There was the hum of machinery, but no loud music. I looked around and everyone seemed to be doing the jobs as if in a daze. So Jude always played music. So the lack of uh, music indicates he's probably not around. Brian. Late. Jude couldn't make it in today. Can you pick up his slack? Brian was staring down at a stack of papers in his arms. He looked tired. He didn't bother to meet my gaze, and it was odd to see him so serious, even now. Without Jude, this place would be a mess. But it would be fine for one day. It had to be. You know, I can see the... So I've got a choice here of either saying, I'm going home too, but don't worry, I will. I can see where she would be tempted to leave and go check on Jude. I'm going to try to be responsible here and, and take, try to help keep this place running today. So, all right, I will. Great. Thanks, Brian says. I got to work and tried to focus on anything but those ghostly noises I swore I could still hear. It was easier to forget while doing busy work. Repetitive movements that didn't require a lot of thought. Eventually I managed to get through my workload and some of Jude's. Now it was time to go home. I was exhausted on so many levels. So back at home. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. Speaking of being tired, I had to go on mute there for a yawn. Progress has, um, has changed slightly. We now have a heart for Ava. I didn't interact with her, her on that day. I didn't notice the heart before. I'm kind of curious now. Um, still one on Jude and Sam. Standing has improved to four. Maybe standing is my standing in the community. That would make sense. Hmm. So it says there wasn't any work to do today. So maybe I can try to see someone. So maybe we're already at the weekend. I wouldn't have guessed I'd played through a whole week. And I just noticed this calendar. <laughs> now I feel kind of stupid. Okay. This is week three, day six. Alright. So let's keep that visible so I know where, where we are. Um, that's actually, an, I don't know if that's intentional, but that's an interesting feature. By not having it, I was very much feeling kind of a lack of progression and the things were just running together. Just day after day, the same thing. And I already feel like now that I can see the, the week and the day, that it'll feel more... I'll be able to sense a progression better and I'll feel a little less lost. Could be coincidence. Sometimes I read way too much into these things. But I think it would be great if that was the intent. If that was the purpose behind having the option to show or not show the week and day. To really, you know, make it clear how, um, how different that little thing can be. And then I think about what it would be like to have no concept of the passage of days. Um, 
I'm watching a television show currently um, called Cr Cruel Summer in which a teenage girl had been held captive for several months and she talks about not knowing exact dates. Someone will ask her when something happened that she can only give a vague ideal because she had no clocks, no calendars, you know, and it would be really difficult to to have a really clear concept on the passage of time in that situation. Like you would know t days were changing. Um, and she had that, you know, she could have some sunlight coming in and, and things. But unless you made a concerted effort to track each day, it, they would just all run together and you wouldn't know, you know. I mean, sometimes it feels like even with access to those things, you know, clocks and calendars and everything, that time sometimes will pass very quickly. Sometimes it seems to pass very slowly. Um, it's, I feel like it's really hard to just have a natural sense of, of that sort of thing. And I think without any sort of marker of passage of time, you know, uh, as far, well, as far as a tracker, I guess not a marker, it would be difficult. Anyway, sorry for that aside. We have, you know, the four options of who we could go visit. I really think I should check on Jude and see how he is doing. I sat at the table and stared down at a puzzle my mother had cluttered her space with. With everything going on, the cartoon characters smiling up at me just got on my nerves. I couldn't take it anymore, so I stood up and headed to the door. Maybe some fresh air would clear my head. When I reached the door, I realized that there was no way to get fresh air. My shoulders slumped, but I continued out into the hallway anyway. I glanced down the halls and just started walking. I didn't really know where I was headed until I saw the greenhouse. I guess I was used to walking to work. There was no reason to be here, so I started to turn around when I heard someone swear. It sounded like Jude. So this is kind of strange to me that I'm given the option of who to go see, but when I chose Jude, it just seemed like chance. Like she was just randomly walking with no real um, destination in mind. She ended up walking to the greenhouse out of habit. Had no reason to think Jude would be there, but there he is. So, the choice that was presented wasn't really about the character choosing where to go. You know, it was the player choosing which character to interact with next. I know those might sound like the same thing, but, you know, to me it seems it's very different. I, I'm kind of it's kind of disappointing to me because that that disconnects me from the story because it's obvious with that choice that I'm stepping out of the game and I'm making the choice as you know, a player or as a narrator or whatever you want to call me. And I'm not, I'm not putting, you know, I'm not in the position of the character making choices as her. And I much, I much prefer that. I much prefer making choices as if I were the character and seeing those choices play out. Jude? I'm not clear why I'm in the hallway still since I went to the greenhouse. But anyway, I glanced around a corner and saw Jude glaring at the ground. He kicked at it and met my gaze. What are you doing? I'm not sure. He stuffed something in his pockets and wiped his hands on his pants. What are you doing? 
I guess I'm not sure either. We fell into an awkward silence. I got the feeling he was hiding something, but I had no idea what or why. So we can either ask him to hang out or ask him about it. I'm, I'm going to ask him about it. we become friends. You aren't hiding some illegal tech in there, are you? I pointed, but he turned away from me. No. I've got to run late, so I'll see you around. He didn't wait for me to reply. He just left. I decided to go home and try to read to get my mind off of things. So now it was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. So I suppose we went home. I've already read and now it's bedtime. Um, no change, no change to the tracker. There was a town hall meeting today in the community center. I glanced at mom who was fretting over her hair. I'm guessing the mayor wants to discuss what happened. Mom lowered her arms and deflated a little. It was so awful. I'm so glad we made it to Camden when we did. She turned around and appeared to study me. It was a tragedy, an awful tragedy. I can't help but focus on my appreciation that you and I are safe. She grasped her hands together and pulled them close to her chest. They trembled slightly. If you're hoping... If you're hoping I know what Rick plans to say, I don't. I'm guessing he'll try to explain himself, justify what he did. Do you think he did the right thing? She frowned and dodged my question. I don't know. What do you think about what he did? It's not exactly a dodge. I mean, she acknowledged the question. She's just um, kind of turning it back on you. It sucks, but he did what he had to do. I'm glad we were both safe in here too. Mom smiled and put me, pulled me into her arms, stroking my hair. I'd let the whole world burn down to keep you safe. She kissed the top of my head. My baby. I'm not a baby. You'll always be my baby. She ruffled my hair and went back to, me, to messing with hers. She didn't seem to have a solid opinion, or at least wanted, wanted to share it with me if she did. I knew better than to try to get it out of her. I didn't know anyone better at redirecting the conversation than her. We finished getting ready and then left to go to the community center. The room was fuller than I had ever seen it. Despite this, it was quiet. I saw the mayor at the stage speaking with someone. Mom squeezed my shoulder and moved to join him. I needed to find a seat and saw a few people I recognized. So we can choose to sit with you know, Gloria, Eva, Micah, or Jude. Yeah, really, Gloria and Mike I haven't really had much interaction with, so I think they're out. Um, it's really down to Jude or Eva, and I... On the one hand, maybe I should try to go... You know, to Jude because of our last interaction. On the other hand... Ooh, excuse me. On the other hand, I feel like maybe I should give him some space. So we're going to go sit by Eva. The mayor walked towards the podium and gently tapped the mic. The speaker studied, thudded unpleasantly. On this sad occasion, I have gathered you all here to discuss what happened a few days ago. The room was still silent. His voice echoed against the walls. It was a horrible tragedy, and I had to make hard choices. Choices that would allow Camden, all of you, to thrive or fall. He began to outline a list of all the reasons he had kept the doors closed. Limited supplies, the dangers of the storm, potential for security threats, and he continued. Ava crossed her arms and leaned close to me. 
bullshit. He's so full of it. What do you mean? He murdered all of those people. He's no better than the Sandman. Survival for the strong, slaughter for the weak. She whispered, but her words were angry. You really think so? You don't? No. It was an awful decision, but it had to be made. I'm just glad I was on the right side of the doors. She blinked, but then nodded. That's a way to see it, I guess. Eva rolled her shoulders, and the mayor's words suddenly grabbed my attention again. Now I know many of you are feeling scared and uncertain. I ask you all to trust me. Camden is my priority, and I wouldn't do anything to put our community in danger. There was an empty thread in the air. His words alone seemed harmless, but his tone darkened on the last sentiment. I looked at Mom, but she was busy jotting some things down. I looked around at the room, still eerily quiet. No one seemed to have anything more to say. There was an odd tension in the air that I really couldn't seem to shake. I wanted to leave, go home. When I looked around, I saw that I wasn't the only one squirming in my seat. Know that I am here for you all. Camden is here for you, the mayor continued. He left the podium and was immediately surrounded by people who wanted to ask him questions. I was not one of those people, so I did head home. So, I've had this... suspicion, paranoia, you could say, since the beginning, that something would happen, something bad, that this place wasn't, couldn't be as great as it seemed. And, excuse me, you know, when I saw that, you know, there was seemingly increased guard activity, that had my suspicions up. And then the storm coming in the middle of the night the way that it did. I have to wonder if it was staged. If there was no actual storm, but they used some sort of technology. Ooh, excuse me. To cause, um, you know, tremors to make it seem like there was a storm to allow the mayor to create a sense of fear and perceive him as, you know, being the protector ultimately as a way of getting more power and maybe curbing some some freedom. I'm not normally a, so like a, not exactly a false flag sort of thing, but more like, you know, just, well, I mean, it's a fake. I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Anyway, I just can't shake the idea that the story can't be as, you know, as pleasant start to finish as it's seeming. So we have more free time to spend. We'll go, we'll go back to the Icarus because the last time I was there was when I ran into Ava. So something did change somewhat. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. So there are a few things I can do. And we'll hang out with Sam as always. Sam was behind the bar tossing glasses into a tub and shoving bottles around. The sound of broken glass made me wince. Hey, Sam. Late? You want a drink or something? She looked like she was trying very hard to contain whatever temper she was about to lose. I was scared to answer the wrong way. We'll, we'll, I'll say yes. Uh, sure, a whiskey on the rock should be great. I spoke slowly and tried to gauge her reaction. She only nodded and started to make it. She slammed the drink down in front of me. 
It was overly full and a bit spilled onto the top of her hand. So, how's your day been? Sam lifted an eyebrow but didn't speak. I cleared my throat. Bad? I'm in a foul mood, yeah. If that's what you're getting at. Yes? Sam sighed. I don't want to talk about it, okay? Yes, I'm in a bad mood. So what? Life goes on. It always just goes on. She held her arms out, her voice raising as she spoke. No matter what fucking happens, here I am, making drinks. Her eyes started to water, and she slammed both fists down the table. Things were quiet. Then she spoke, hardly a whisper. Get out. Her voice was hoarse and sad. It was less of an order and more of a pleading request. I couldn't say anything. I was only confused. I backed out and left her alone. So my guess... My guess is that, you know, she knew that she still had people on the surface that were probably lost. Um, that's my assumption. So, I didn't know why Sam was so upset. There had to be something bothering her. But I guess she wasn't someone who easily gave that information away. So we're back in the room. It was getting late, and I was tired. Time for bed. So my relationship with Eva has dropped off. My relationship with Sam has actually gone up to two. I, I don't feel like that last... Um, you wouldn't think that last interaction would have done that, but maybe just the fact that she didn't exactly confide in me, but we had that inter interaction at all, maybe. I hate to say improved, but like increased the connection. Here we are in the next morning, week four, day one. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. It was just another day in the greenhouse. I danced along to Jude's music while I mixed the compost. The stench was horrible. You know, compost doesn't really smell bad. It smells nice. A nice earthy... Um, it's a nice deep earthy smell. Anyway. Same old, same old. But I noticed she did not interact with Jude there, even though he was present. Work was over and I had some time to kill. So even though the last interaction with Sam went poorly, I could return there. Or I could go to the gym or the library. I think now is the time to change. I think I'm going to hit the library. Let's give Sam some more time. The library was empty today, and as I approached the counter... I didn't even see Trevor. It was quiet, but the lights were on and nothing had been locked up. I glanced around at the shelves. Ooh, so I have five options here. Drama, fantasy, comedy, horror, or romance. Well, given the option, I would pick fantasy myself, so we'll go with fantasy. I really wanted to borrow The Rise of the Hawks. So we take the book or leave a note? Well, why can't we do both? We'll pick leave the note. After I found the Rise of the Hawks to borrow, I retrieved my card from the box and made a note of the book I was borrowing. No reason to make the grumpy librarian grumpier. Otherwise, I had nothing to do here. I glanced around one last time, but I was still alone. I left. Okay, I accidentally advanced that um, without intending to. But here we are the next morning back in the greenhouse. I walked into the greenhouse and heard the comforting blast of Jude's music. Things might finally be getting back to normal. See, this doesn't make sense because the previous day Jude's music was playing as well. 
But why was that not why was that not comforting and things getting back to normal? I headed to see if there were any special notes, and Jude tapped me on the shoulder. Late. I looked at him, but he was flipping through a book. Wait, he tapped her on the shoulder while flipping through a book? That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, what's up? Can you go through Brian's papers on his desk and find one that looks like... He stopped looking through the book and held up a page. This. Do you think you can find it? Paper like this on his desk. Got it. Thanks. Okay, so maybe he was looking for something in the book. Maybe it does make sense. He turned and started getting equipment out to test the chemical levels in the water. Another job I wasn't allowed to do yet. I tried to hold the image of the paper in my mind as I entered Brian's cluttered desk, oh, cluttered dark office. I knew if he wasn't here, let me try that again. I knew he wasn't here since I couldn't hear any thundering, thunderous snoring, but I was surprised that the lights was off. I clicked the light and groaned. His desk was a complete disaster. Papers, flyers, packets, everywhere. On the desk, chair, floor. There were so many places to start. I needed to get this stupid report paper thing and get out of here. After uncovering a lot of junk, I finally located the paper that looked like what Jude had wanted. There was a coffee stain on the corner. I sighed. Another paper was stuck to it, thanks to the old coffee. I pulled away an inventory list. It tore slightly, but I doubted Brian would notice, and set it back on his desk. I had what Jude had asked for, and I couldn't spend another minute in all this clutter. I left Brian's office and gave Jude what he asked for. Then I went back to my usual duties. Jude seemed unusually busy this morning. Either there was a lot to do, or he was trying to keep busy. Work was over, and I had some time to kill. <clears throat> so we've got a book. We don't need to go back to the library. So let's let's hit the Icarus up again. We skip today. See if Sam's in any better, you know, better mood, feeling better. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. There were a few things I could do: hang out with Sam or just try to relax. Maybe that's easy into it and just try to relax. Um, okay, that's weird. It went straight to asking me for my drink choice. I did not see that it asked me for it. Anyway, we'll go with whiskey and ice. I like the burn of the whiskey. I ordered a whiskey on the rocks and sat at the bar by myself. Okay, that was it. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. Um, no change to the progress next day this is day three of week four i got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work it was just another day in the greenhouse i refilled water tanks and took notes on the inventory same old same old work was over and i had some time to kill so we can spend, again, time at the library, Jim or Icarus. Let's hit up the Icarus and see if we can talk with Sam this time. I walked in feeling a little more exhausted than usual. Then I glanced around and saw something that made me even more tired. Mom was here with the mayor. They hadn't seen me yet. Was, was this something I really wanted to deal with right now? Eh... Uh, I can either say hello, spy on them, or leave before they see me. Now let's just say hi. I didn't want to, but I walked over to see what they were doing anyway. Late. It's good to see you. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Please join us. I sat down. Working late? Not tonight. Rick thought we deserved a night off. Your mother has managed to help me restructure my organization methods to be considerably more efficient. <clears throat> That's really fancy talk for me archiving his older files. It was something I could never get around to doing before. Is my mom your first assistant? 
Seems like you would have had a small horde of them. My work requires precision, and I will admit I have some troubles trusting others to help me with it. And he thought my scatterbrained mother was the right one to help him with that? I leaned back and said nothing. I love helping this community, the mother says. It's such an improvement over our old life, don't you think so, Late? It did suck on the surface. That is an understatement. An awkward silence descending on a, descended on us, and I decided enough was enough. Well, I'll leave you guys to relax. I'm going to head home. I'll see you later, Mom. All right, hon. See you later tonight. I made my exit as quick as possible. I was ready to spend a bit of time at home, alone. It was getting late, and I was tired. Time for bed. Um, no change on the tracker. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. Work was really dragging today. Brian was here for once and even being productive. Jude was running around like crazy. I think they were preparing for something, but I had no idea what. I tried to do what I needed to and stay out of everyone's way. A lot of people were absent because of some illness that was going around. Even then, it wasn't like this place to be so chaotic. My best guess was that there was something going on or about to happen. I just had no idea what and no one was telling me. Now work was over and I had some time to kill. Where would you like to spend your free time? Let's head up to Icarus again and see if we can talk to Sam. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. There were a few things I could do, hang with Sam or try to relax. We'll hang with Sam. Icarus was extra lively tonight. Now, it literally just said there's nothing particularly interesting and then goes on to say it's extra lively. I would find extra lively to be something interesting, personally. Anyway. Icarus was extra lively tonight and Sam seemed to be enjoying the crowd. I found an empty spot to sit at and watch people. After some time, I wondered if I should offer to lend Sam a hand. Yeah, let's see. Maybe that will help. I walked over and she spotted me. Seemed to understand my intentions and waved me off. I sat back down at the bar and after some time she headed over to talk to me. I've dealt with worse. Just sit. You seem to prefer this. She smiled but shrugged. It's better than having no one here. She left to get back to work and I sat back and watched her. She handled all the chaos with ease and I couldn't help but feel a little jealous. I would be a wreck if I was in her shoes. Just thinking about it was stressing me out. We're back in the room. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. No changes to the tracker. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. This is day five of week four. Just another day at the greenhouse. I cleaned out water filters that had gotten clogged with debris and put anything usable into the compost. Same old, same old. Work was over and I had some time to kill. All right. Same deal. We're going to hit up the Icarus one more time. If nothing of interest happens, I'll try something new. I walked in and saw Gloria sitting at the bar. Something different. She was slightly hunched over and had her back turned to as many people as possible. I couldn't help but wonder if she was in a bad mood. You can buy her a drink and give her space. Go say hi or mind her own business. I've not really been interacting with Gloria, so I may as well mind my own business. 
I sat at an empty seat at the bar and ordered myself a drink. Gloria really didn't look like she wanted to be bothered. So I ordered my usual and chatted with Sam when she wasn't busy. Although I guess that was an opportunity for interaction that I missed. I should have played that differently now that I think about it. We're back at the room. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. So looking at the tracker, I'm up to three with Sam now. Still at one with Jude. I haven't really had any opportunities to interact with him in a little bit since immediately following the storm, I guess, which was like six days ago. There wasn't any work to do today, so maybe I could try to see someone. So let's try to see Jude. I feel like we need to reconnect if he'll, you know, if he's okay with me now. I walked out into the hallway and ran into Jude. Same, kind of the same deal, although I could have been going there, so I won't argue too much. Oh, hey. Hi. So, uh, see ya. Wait, I'm bored. What are you doing? Maybe I can tag along. Or not. No, it's, it's just... Sure, come on. I followed him as he walked towards the library. You like to read? Not especially. But I'm looking for something specific. What's that? I'm trying to identify this strange thing that I have. You remember? I showed you the other night. Oh yeah. I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do now remember. He was talking about that little round beepy thing. So it was this little round metal disc with buttons you push a button and it, some tones emit from it and you push another button and it changes I can't decide if it's something like like a Tamagotchi or something like a watch or even something like a music player like I really can't I really don't know what it is so I'm, ho I'm hoping he finds out where did you get that anyway when the scouts go out to scavenge from the ruins, they bring back all kinds of junk. I pick through it and grab anything interesting. They let you do that? No, so don't tell anyone. Oh, okay. I followed him through the shelves and he began to poke through the ones with technical information. He picked up a book and paged through it. It still works, right? It had seemed to work anyway. Sort of? I don't know. I can't tell what it's supposed to do and if it's doing it. It has a screen and a lot of buttons. Jude paused and put the book away, his shoulder slumping forward somewhat. Even then, the battery I put in it won't last much longer. Sounds interesting. He looked at me for a moment. Late. Want to see something really cool? Yeah, obviously. He gave me a small smile and then tugged my arm to lead me out of the library. He surprised me by leading me to the greenhouse. He took me back to his office type area. Look. I looked down at it and then back at him. Open it. It's a music box. I carefully lifted the lid then heard a soft and warm chirping. A small coil inside the box began to move. Wow, cool. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. Really? I find them a lot, but they hardly ever work. I shook my head and closed the lid. What a strange song it was playing. Perhaps it had been warped by heat. I'm starting to think you're some kind of criminal. He shrugged. I guess you can think that if you want. I'm only teasing. I know. He looked down at some oily pieces of metal on his desk and began to sort them. I opened my mouth to speak and break the awkwardness. But he beat me to it. 
He began to tell me about all the various components he had collected and what they did. After some time, I headed back home. So we're back in the room. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. So no change. We're still at one heart with Jude. A groan from the bathroom woke me up. I leaned up and glanced around, trying to shake the fuzziness of sleep. Mom? Another groan answered me. She was in the bathroom. I thought the bug had almost completely run its course through the community, but Mom must have gotten it last. I was starting to feel really thankful that I hadn't caught it. You all right in there? The door cracked open just wide enough for Mom's hand to poke through a point of the table. Tell Rick I'm sick, please. I wrote him a note. Make sure he gets it, okay, honey? Sure, Mom. But maybe I should stay home and... No, no. I'd rather you didn't. Just go and give Rick my note. She shut the door before I could argue. Obviously, she would hear me through the door, but I got the message. I grabbed the note. It was folded and taped, and my mother's handwriting graced the front. She had only written Rick, and it made me sigh. I wasn't sure she should be so openly casual with the mayor, but I guess there was no stopping her now. I got dressed and grabbed the note and headed out the door. I was still early, so the hallways weren't too crowded. The note felt heavy in my hands, and it felt awkward walking around with it. What had my mom even written in it? It had to be boredom, but I felt very compelled to read it. Maybe it would give me insight to what was going on between her and the mayor. It wasn't like it would seem strange for the letter to be sealed a bit sloppily, especially if she was sick. Do we read it or not read it? So... My general thought... Normally, is I wouldn't read it because unless I was playing a certain um, certain type of personality, I guess. Um, but I want to know what it says. I'm going to read it. This goes against. Well, this goes against what I would normally do. I had to know. I glanced around, but no one was looking at me. I carefully peeled the tape and opened the letter. So, this is from Camilla. It's weird the way it's formatted. Anyway, Rick, I'm not feeling well. I'm so sorry, but I'll, but I'll go to you as soon as I'm better. It's just that bug that's been going around. Her name was signed at the bottom. That's it. I resealed the letter and tried not to feel like an idiot. There'd been no reason for me to bother with it. When I got to the community center, the doors were open. I spotted the mayor up by the stage, so I headed over to hand him the note. Here, uh, Mr. Mayor, from Mom. I handed him the note. He eyed the tape for a second before opening the letter to read it. Thank you, late. Do you think your mother will mind if I come by to... I don't know if that's a good idea. She really isn't feeling well. Right. Give her my, um... He cleared his throat. Let Camilla know that I hope she feels better soon, late. I will. I backed up and walked back to the crowd. I ignored the few glances that were shot my way. After a few moments, he stood there to address the community. I am happy to announce that the stomach bug that has been going around this week seems to have died down, despite the discomfort know that the worst is over and the illness was not dangerous. Steps have been taken to prevent this from happening again and I must continue to ask that if you aren't feeling well then please confine yourself to quarters. This will help prevent the spread of it. He started to make some general announcements but some people near the front started to speak up and shout. I couldn't make out what they were saying 
But then the mayor responded. Right. I know many of you are still concerned about what happened on the surface. When it is safe, I will send out couriers to gauge the situation. Until then, it is in Camden's best interest to carry on. The people at the front who had been shouting didn't look appeased, but the mayor assured them he would speak to them personally. I was curious about it, but at the same time, I wanted to get out of here. I could check back on mom and then make myself scarce while she recovered. I had some time to do something before the day was over. Library, gym, or Icarus, like normal, and we're going to hit up Icarus again. Because I missed out on my chance to uh, socialize with uh, Gloria last time. Of course, this time, nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. So I can either hang out with Sam or relax. We're going to try hanging out with Sam. Sam was resting her chin in her hand and looked about ready to fall asleep. Tired? Obviously. I slept like shit and this place is empty. There were people, but not as many as she would like, I guess. Ask why she slept poorly. Why didn't you get any sleep? Wish I knew. She stood up straight and rubbed her eyes roughly. I'm closing this place early, so unless you want a drink to go, get out. Uh, okay. I left. Hopefully she could get some sleep. All right, so it was getting late and I was tired, so time for bed. No changes here to the tracker. Next morning, I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. It was just another day in the greenhouse. I made sure Brian was doing what he was supposed to and helped Jude get everything else done. Same old, same old. Now work was over and I had some time to kill. We're going to try the, the uh, Icarus one more time. Same deal. Anything, anything interesting, then I'll continue heating up the Icarus. Otherwise, I want to mix it up the next time. And something, <laughs> something happened. When I walked in, I was immediately held by Brian. Late. Have a drink with me. I walked over and looked around, but didn't see a trace of Trevor. Where? So, how are you adjusting to life underground? Oh, fine, I guess. The surface is a harsh place. He picked up a glass with clear liquid and swirled it around for a moment before taking a careful drink. Yeah. Camden is an oasis, right? Sanctuary. His words were a bit slurred. How much have you had to drink? The library is not a nice place. I nodded. He wasn't really listening to me. Let's let him talk. So my options are let him talk or help him home. The library with the books. You know... It should be so dusty in there. It's not, though. I nodded, and he continued. Trevor dusts it, you know? He dusts it. He doesn't like people, but he likes books. Sometimes. Sometimes I don't like people either, you know? You know? I nod, and he seemed satisfied by my reaction and continued. I like Trevor, though. He nodded and then laughed. So Sam approaches. Time to go. Ah, oh, Sam. Time to go. Brian deflated and left under Sam's glare. He doesn't come here often, but I swear. She rolled her eyes and walked away, leaving me with so many questions. Brian was a strange drunk. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. 
kind of wish every day didn't end with the same, exact same, you know, wording or narration. No change to the progress tracker. So we're back at the start of day two. I walked into work and saw Jude. I waved, but then there was a commotion outside the door. I turned, but I couldn't tell what was going on. Then there was even more noise. I looked back at Jude. Maybe he would know what was going on. I took a step towards him, but someone busted through the entrance behind me and I froze. They were yelling. Someone, come to the community center quick. Something crazy is going on. Jude set down the bundle he'd been carrying and walked up to me. What's going on? No idea, but I guess we should check it out. Have you seen Brian? No, I just got here. Jude sighed and shook his head. He's probably still at the library with Trevor. I guess we'll see him there. We headed out among the others. Whatever was going on must be a pretty big deal to draw such a crowd. The crowd grew as more people began to come in, either to join the protest or watch. Everyone was shouting, with a few up on stage. The speakers weren't turned on, but you could still hear what they were saying. The mayor is murdering those people. He can't take some in, temporarily? What about the children and elderly? He is practically killing them himself. The crowd cheered and shouted similar ideas. We all have family and friends out there, don't we? Is it okay for us to sit safe in here while all those people die? More people began to speak up, either to agree or argue. You're a fool. We don't have the food and resources to support so many people. What about our children? Would you have them go hungry? What if we let in sand men spies? They should have been better prepared for the storm. Now that's a, a shitty attitude. How long has it been since you were on the surface? No one can prepare for that kind of storm and power outage. Arguments started to get heated and everyone was starting to get antsy. The room was rumbling with energy. The protesters wanted to open the doors now and help anyone who was left. They wanted to find their left, the left behind loved ones. They wanted news. A booming voice at the entrance caught everyone's attention. The mayor stepped forward. Everyone paused and fell quiet as he moved through the crowd. He simply walked and the crowd parted for him, his face unreadable. When he reached the stage, he grabbed a mic and the speaker suddenly sparked to life. I understand there has been unrest with Camden, within Camden. It pains me to hear you fight like this. Are we no better than the lawless warlords that prey on the weak? Every choice I make, I make for Camden. I have refused some, I have refused sending aid because we cannot spare it. I have refused to open the doors because we do not have the ability to support the consequences of that action. I must plead with you all, beg you to trust me. Trust that I make no decisions without carefully considering how it will affect you, how it will affect our children, our loved ones, our lifeline. When you were accepted into Camden, each and every one of you became part of my family. I will do whatever, I will do what needs to be done. I always will so that we can all thrive together. He paused and glanced around the room. The energy seemed to settle, but I could still see some people weren't being so easily pacified. When the time is right, I will send couriers to assess the situation on the surface. Then, if anything can be done without hurting Camden in the process, know that I will do it. Also, know that I will never do anything to put Camden in any danger. He took a deep breath and opened his arm wide to the crowd. I'm here, now. If any of you wish to discuss the choices I've made, now's the time to approach me. He set down a mic and Vince moved to stand beside him on stage. People were hesitant at first. Oops, I accidentally advanced. I decided to head back to work, though I wasn't sure if I could focus. 
I couldn't believe people were protesting what the mayor had done. He had done the most logical thing, even if it wasn't the kindest. The mayor had to consider everyone down here first. I nibbled on my lip and tried to fight the twisting doubt pulling at my mind. He had made the right choice, hadn't he? So I have the options of maybe he had been wrong or it was still the right choice. I, I gotta keep going with it was the right choice. I mean, uh, it wasn't kind. And it's a terrible situation to be in to try to make a decision. And I, I can see the arguments from both sides very, very easily. But I'm, I'm going to continue being supportive. Screwing with the fragile balance of Camden's resources would have spelled disaster for everyone. The door should have stayed closed. I tried to shake the darker thoughts away and focus on what I needed to do. Now wasn't the time to get lost in my own mind. There was work to do. I returned with Jude. Still no signs of Brian. Though that wasn't unusual. He is probably still at the damn library. Jude began to pace wildly. He would start to pick something up, but then set it back down. I can't believe there was a protest. I've never seen anything like it. It's a waste of time. You think the mayor gave a shit? No. Besides, no one realizes just how fucked things we could get if the doors were open. Letting people in and sending what? Food? Do you know how delicate the balance is in the greenhouse? Because I do. He covered his eyes. Fuck. Fuck. Late. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be yelling at you. It's okay. You're upset. I don't mind if you need to talk or yell. He moved his hands and looked at me. I've got to get to work. That'll clear my head. Thanks for putting up with me, Late. I smiled and he turned to head towards the CD player. I expect the greenhouse will be full of rough music any second now. I got back to work and tried to make up for Brian's absence as usual. And then the day's over. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. So um, I guess the protest delayed the work day and so we ended up working late. Maybe? Um, progress tracker so shows stress has increased to a two. Otherwise, no change. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. Things were a bit more tense than usual. Everyone seemed to be processing what had happened yesterday. Otherwise, the day went on normally. Jude worked, Brian pretended to work, and I tried to learn my way around. Been like four weeks. You'd think she would know her way around somewhat. Eventually, I fell into a flow that helped me get my mind off of things. Back in the room, work was over, and I had some time to kill. Where would we like to spend our free time? Let's head up to Icarus. The bar was busier than it had than I had yet to see it. Music was turned up and the noise of it all fell on me. I took an empty seat and tried to decide if I wanted to bother staying or not. The sounds of conversation floated around the room until one caught my attention. A couple sitting beside me were poorly whispering to each other. They seemed to be plotting something. I wasn't sure what. Whatever it was sounded like trouble. They were discussing escape plans and alibis. I didn't want to hear any more, so I walked towards the bar to order a drink and saw Vince. Should I tell him about the suspicious things I overheard the couple talking about? They were clearly drunk, so it could be nothing. You know what? I'm telling Vince. Screw it. I let Vince know and he thanked me. He said he would look into it and not to worry about it. We're back in the room. It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. 
So, no change in the progress tracker. Next morning, I got up, headed out to grab a coffee before work. I walked into work and had to pause. There was no loud music. Brian appeared to be working and everything seemed to be extra clean. Jude, don't just stand there late. Jude came up behind me. The mayor will be here any minute. Look busy, okay? Why is he coming? The inspection. Inspection? Yeah, try to stay out of the way, okay? Between Brian and the mayor, I may lose my damn mind today. I nodded and started to head over to the desk where my paperwork was. Before I could even reach it, the door opened again and I turned to see who had entered. The mayor walked in, and the air changed. I felt tense, but then I saw a familiar smile beside him. Mom was here too. She gave me an overly friendly wave, which I awkwardly returned. There were a few curious glances sent my way, but I tried to ignore them. Just get back to work late. Brian stepped up and began to fill the mayor in on everything. He was holding a piece of paper, and even from here I could tell it was Jude's handwriting. I sighed and tried to focus on paperwork. I started to fill out the forms when someone tapped me on the shoulder. I turned and Mom was smiling at me. How's work going? Don't you need to, I, I don't know, help the mayor walk around or something? I'm sure he can manage without me for a few moments. She looked over my shoulder and I fought the weird urge to cover up the paperwork. She was making me nervous. Do you have to? She took a step back, rolling her eyes. So, how have you liked working here? So we have three options. Love it. It's a pain in the ass, but... Or hate it. Let's take the middle road. It sucks, but I like it. I'm always sweaty and dirty, but the plants are really cool to watch. The mayor approached. Our greenhouses are one of the most essential parts of Camden. Without them, we would not be living so comfortably. I'm glad that you enjoy it, despite the harsh environment. I hadn't noticed the mayor sneak up on us. Did he have to walk so quietly? Camilla, I believe we're done here. Perhaps you'd like to stay behind to spend time with your daughter? No, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, I've got work to do. She gave me a quick hug. It's alright. I'll see you later tonight. Rick looked between us and then stiffly patted my shoulder, making my chest tighten. I froze as he awkwardly said goodbye and then they both walked out. After they were gone, I threw myself into my work so no one would ask me why the mayor was acting so familiar with me. Back in the room, work was over, and I had some time to kill. Let's go to the Icarus. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in Icarus today. We can hang out with Sam or relax. We'll try hanging with Sam. I hung out at the bar until almost everyone else was gone. I made small talk with Sam while she prepped to close. And then this one night, a damn sandstorm was blowing in, and these bastards huddled under the bar, and they just kept on drinking. She laughed, shaking her head at the memory. They even left the money for their drinks, if you can believe it. You trusted them in your bar? My life's worth more than some booze. I'm not going to serve some lunatics during a sandstorm. I took cover like a sensible person. Was Jude with you then? She paused and smiled softly. No, but I knew him. That was back when his parents were still alive. He was just one of the kids running around at that point. So you tended bar from a very early age? It beats fighting, farming, or building. People always love a good bartender. She laughed and continued to tell me of her days on the surface while I kept her company. Ooh. We're back in the room. 
It was getting late and I was tired. Time for bed. Hmm, this is interesting. I, I don't understand what's... Maybe this is... I don't know. I'm curious now the things on the right. I assume these are relationship trackers, but now it says I have a woman with Trevor. I haven't even seen Trevor. Maybe because I checked out the book and left a note? I don't know. I'm, I'm actually confused. We're still at a stress level two. I got up and headed out to grab a coffee before work. So one thing that kind of annoys me is that when it's just, I got up and had a coffee, or, you know, it's just another day at the greenhouse, like we're seeing here. It's just the environment. Like, they don't bother showing the character. Oh, sorry, excuse me, I keep yawning. They don't uh, even bother showing the characters until they're speaking. But I don't know, the character is still in the scene. And it doesn't seem like it would be that much effort to... Just show the standard, you know, image of, of your character. But it's not a big deal. It's just a little, little picky thing. I carefully organized the reports Brian had left scattered on his desk and checked the water tank levels. Same old, same old. Work was over and I had some time to kill. All right, we're going to do this one more time. I've been sensing a pattern. It seems like every time I say that, um, something will happen. I think it's every other time. So let's see. I sat at the bar and leaned my head against the counter. I was still reeling from the storm and the resulting chaos. A nice, strong drink. That would help. At least it would distract me for a few hours. Sam was offering a special on custom ale. Let's buy a drink. I ordered one and threw it back. It burned my throat a bit, so the alcohol content had to be high. I felt warm, and the music started to sound better. I rested my head in my hands and tried to chase away any thoughts. Focus on the music. Focus on the warm feeling in my gut. I finished my drink. We can go home or buy another. And I'm going to buy another. The song changed, but all the songs split into each other. I laughed at the music. It echoed off the walls in a way that it had never done on the surface. I sighed happily. It felt nice, warm and relaxed, even if the room felt a bit tilted all of a sudden. We can go home or buy another drink. Let's keep drinking. I had another drink and then another. I could afford it. I wasn't really spending the beads on anything else. Eventually, I set my head down on the cool bar, laughing. I must have looked silly. I pushed myself to my feet and swayed over to the jukebox. I wanted to hear that first song again. I hit at the buttons, but nothing was happening. I sighed and tried to decide if I should keep trying. The buttons were faded and worn from use. Then I was shoved aside. I stumbled and only barely managed to stay on my feet. There was some guy at my jukebox messing with the buttons, but he managed to change the song. He had shoved me. I rolled my shoulders and moved without thinking. I shoved him back. Hey! The world began to spin. The guy turned to face me. Suddenly he was pulled away and I was alone, glaring into an empty space. I stumbled back a step and hit a booth. The occupants glared up at me. I waved at them and mumbled an apology. Things were starting to get hazy, so I headed towards the bar. Sam might give me some water, unless another drink would help. Another drink might make me feel good again. I couldn't find Sam, but she found me. She grabbed me and told me to go home. I tried to argue, but Sam was scary, so I eventually gave in. It was getting late and I was tired, so time for bed. It's not, you're not just tired, you're drunk. Anyway, the stress has gone down. 
All right, day six of week five. There is no work to do, so maybe I can try to see someone. Let's go. Check in with Ava. We've not talked to her in a while. Things were so weird, I really wanted to clear my head. The protests had happened days ago, but the uneasy tension was still in the air. I wasn't big on exercise, but a walk would be nice. I might even run into Ava. So I think you'd be hung over and not wanting to do anything. Personally, mom wasn't here as usual, so I locked up and headed out. I stepped into the gym and noticed Ava right away. She was usually jogging and sparring, but today she was fiercely attacking a punching bag. She seemed upset. My feet moved before I had even considered what I was doing. As I got closer, I realized she wasn't paying any attention. I didn't want to frighten her. I cleared my throat, but she still jumped. She turned around, and her eyes widened when she saw me. Late. Hey, you're going to kill that punching bag. <laughs> yeah, right. She rubbed the back of her neck and kicked out of the ground with her shoe. I was just going to walk around uh, the thing. I gestured weakly at the track, smiling. I wasn't too sure what else to say now that she was actually here. Yeah, that's good. Exercise is good. She wiped away some sweat before it slid into her eyes. I, I should say something. I just couldn't seem to think straight. Yeah, it is. She nodded. I should say something else. This was getting awkward, wasn't it? So, punching looks fun. <laughs> what? She laughed, smirking at me. The hitting the bag. You've never done it? Sure, maybe. I mean, I've seen it done. I may have smacked one once. Do you want to? She motioned at the punching bag over her shoulder. Go on. Show it who's boss. I moved and tried to mimic the stance I had seen so many times before. I glanced at Ava, and she nodded her encouragement. There was no way I wasn't about to make a total fool of myself. But I swallowed my nerves and punched the bag. Pain radiated through my fist as it met the heavy thing. And I jerked back to look at my knuckles. Damn. The bag hardly wobbled, as if it, it was as if I had done nothing to it at all. Ava took my hand and moved it into another fist. Keep your thumb out like this. Here, you can use my gloves. She pulled off her gloves and helped me put them on. I'm off with this. Nah, you're a natural. Give yourself a chance. A natural, hmm? Go on, strike it again. I formed my fist the way she had shown me and struck the back again. It hurt less, thanks to the gloves, but the back still hardly moved. You gotta build your upper body strength. It won't happen overnight. Maybe I'm just not cut out for fighting. I laughed and started to remove Ava's gloves. It's okay, I can protect you. I felt heat creep into my cheeks, but couldn't glance up at her. Promise? Promise, so I may not always be around. If you really want to learn some self-defense, then I'll teach you. Just say the word. I'll think about it. I shrugged, feeling antsy. I guess I should go... Let me try this again. I guess I should do what I came here for and let you get back to it. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll see you around, okay? Yeah. I walked away, trying not to trip over my feet, and started to walk around the track. I glanced occasionally over at Ava, who had resumed punching the bag. A few times our eyes met, and I'd quickly look away. Please, let her not realize I keep looking at her like a weirdo. I forced myself to behave like a normal person, and finished my lame workout. Some guys from security eventually walked in. <sighs> I'm really bad about automatically advancing, and I'm, I apologize for that. So some guys from security I walked in, I walked over to Ava. And now it's uh, we're back in the room. It's getting late, and I'm tired. Time for bed. Looks like we've got 
one heart back with Ava. Otherwise, um, and the stress level is still back down at one. So over the, I think otherwise we're the same. Okay, day seven. Mom shook me awake and ignored my attempts to hide under a pillow. Late, late, late. Wake up, my child. Do I have to? Things are so hectic here right now. You can't stay home. What if I get distracted on the way to the meeting? I might get lost or fall down a hole if you aren't there to stop me. She was in a good mood. She laughed as she spoke. Why are you like this in the morning? I should ask you the same thing. I got out of bed and started to get dressed. Mom continued to prance around the room. Why are you in such a good mood? More so than usual, anyway. I had good dreams. She, sh she shrugged and began to page through one of her books while she waited for me. It wasn't like her to let anything spoil her fun times, so I shouldn't be surprised. I finished getting ready and we headed out to the town hall meeting. Mom left me at the entrance to speak to the mayor, and I went to find the coffee. I took a cup that looked fuller than the others and leaned against the wall to watch people come and go before the mayor began to speak. Everyone just looked tired. Vince appeared next to the mayor, whispered something into his ear, and then walked away. That seemed to be what he had been waiting for, because he approached the podium to speak. Good morning, Camden. I'm excited to remind you all of the upcoming Winter Festival that will be held here next week. I also want to announce that there has been no new reports of the stomach bug. I waited, but he never said anything about the protest. I had expected something. I'm not sure what. I looked around and there were other people whispering to each other. I couldn't tell if it was about what I was thinking or something else. The town hall meeting was done and, and nothing, not a word. I tried to listen to what everyone was saying around me, but most people seemed more concerned about the upcoming winter festival thing. I started to leave, but everyone I knew was here. Gloria was by the table gathering unused coffee. Micah was studying the bulletin board. Jude was looking around the room nervously. And Ava was laughing with some security officers. I could go talk to someone if I wanted to. So we can talk to Ava, we can just go home, talk to Micah, Jude, or Gloria. I think let's uh, go chat with Jude. I started to approach Jude, but when he noticed, he waved me away. I froze, and he motioned towards the exit. I took a hesitant step, and he nodded, so I left and went to the hall. I stepped out, and after a moment, Jude joined me. Late. Jude? What? I just gestured around wildly. I almost got into the radio room. He whispered, stepping closer so I could hear him. I think someone noticed, so I backed off. And I was just waiting for another chance. I think I drew too much attention, though. I nodded slowly. Radio room? There's a room off the community center that holds all the radio equipment. I just thought they might have some interesting things laying around that they don't need, right? So I can respond, you are going to get caught. Don't make me an accomplice or I wonder what's in there. That's, I think you are going to get caught is showing concern for him. Jude, you've got to stop doing this. What if you get caught? Right, okay. I just wanted to see how they have their gear set up. I've almost got enough stuff to start getting my own radio working. They're illegal. No one's supposed to have one in case it interferes with Camden's main radio. But it's not a big deal, alright? I just, I want to know what it's like up there, don't you? See how people are doing. You don't think the mayor has already tried to contact Ofsted with the radio? Ofsted. I wonder if that's another town. If he's contacted them, he hasn't shared any news. Their radio is probably down anyway. I just thought if people had some closure, then things would calm down. I shrugged. He was probably right, but he was rubbing his face and didn't seem to want to talk about it anymore. 
He left to head back to his place. I went back inside. I looked around until I saw Mom standing by the mayor, standing so close. I sighed and took some tentative steps towards her. I didn't want to just leave. Mom, I'm, I'm heading back. Mom turned back to me and smiled softly. Of course, I have a bit of work to do. I'll see you tonight by dinner time, okay? The, this is the mayor. Late. I'm sorry I keep your mother so busy. I hope you know how much of a help she is to me. Uh-huh. Camilla, truly, you've helped me in so many ways. Oh, you stop that. I'm too old to blush. He smiled at her and I was clearly forgotten, so I backed up and made my exit. I had some time to do something before the day was over. I can go to the library, the gym, or the Icarus. I think let's hit the library up. Probably need a new book about now. Nothing particularly interesting was going on in the library today. So there were a few things I could do. Check out a book or see what Trevor's up to. I want to just try striking up a conversation with good old Trevor. Trev. Brian was here again. He was leaning heavily against the counter and smiling at Trevor. As far as I could tell, Brian was the only person who had any affection for the librarian. He spoke to me without even looking over. Hey, late. I'm off work, in case you wanted to know. I'm just here to get a book. Trevor, go on then. Trevor was sorting through some papers and appeared to be willfully ignoring Brian. He had no problem telling anyone off, so I assumed if Brian really bothered him, he would say something. I rolled my eyes at Trevor and retreated into the shelves. I made a show of heading towards the back of the library, but then I quietly looped around. Why was Brian always hanging out here? When I got close enough to overhear them, I stood as quietly as possible. Trevor saying, it's getting late. I know, right? This is Brian. Hey, why? I'm actually really busy today, so you should just go home already. There was a heavy quiet between them. I'll stop by tomorrow, okay? You never borrow any books. Why do you even come here? I think you know why, but I suppose I could just try to make it more obvious. I covered my eyes. I couldn't see them, but it seemed like things were becoming just a bit more intimate. I suppose I had my answer, though. I didn't understand why Brian was so smitten, and Trevor seemed nothing but annoyed. I told you... Just go. I'm busy. Alright. If you really want me to. I do. I could hear Brian leaving and I ducked back through the shelf so I could find a book. Trevor would meet, would melt me with his death glare if he saw that I had been eavesdropping. Something was going on between them and whatever it was seemed complicated. I peeked out and saw that Trevor looked extra evil. So I left without bothering to check out a book. It was getting late, and I was tired. Time for bed. All right, so we've got uh, Eva and Jude at one, Sam at a three, Trevor at a one, Standing is four, and Stress is one. So about where we had been. So I think we're going to end things here this morning. I um, streamed for about two hours, so not bad. But it's, uh, it's getting a bit late. I want to go do some prep work for my regular Sunday breakfast. And uh, maybe I can, maybe I'll go fit in some... Uh, some console playing before Brett, but while that's, uh, that's going in the kitchen. So anyway, uh, we've made it through the first five weeks of this game. I'm not sure how many weeks there are. Maybe I can try to find that out before the next stream, which will be tomorrow morning. 
you know, around the same time, hopefully around 6 a.m. It's never consistent because it depends just largely on when I manage to get out of bed. Um, I like to get up and get started earlier when I can, but I try to make it by 6 at the latest. Uh, at least during the week because I have to stop a little earlier to get ready for work. So I want to thank everyone who listened in, everyone who is uh, listening to the recording. I always appreciate it. Um, please uh, join me for a future stream. And um, I've got links up on the screen here if you want to check out the blog or follow me on Twitter or look at uh, look for any of the archive streams on my YouTube channel. With that, I'm going to call it a day. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead, and I will catch you the next time.